Jessica, Nicole, it's wonderful to chat with you. Thank you so much for taking the time. Steve, thank you. And I love your background. I love nature. So, you know, um, it's so wonderful. Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, this is my uh, my back deck. So you're it looks so it looks so much fancier with the tree there. If you look beyond it, you see the broken fence. So let's just stick with the tree. Well, you know, right. the, tree, the tree and the leaves are one of the great images or inspirational images of nature and tree and that we have in a film. So that's why I'm just channeling that right now. <laughs> Well, I, I appreciate that. And uh, but uh, the film is wonderful with this light is a beautiful, beautiful and heart wrenching film. Um, let, I mean, for you both, how did how did this project come together? Um, well, first of all, I knew that sister uh, Maria Rosa Legal, this is Jessica Sarowitz, by the way, executive producer of With This Light. Um, I knew that her story and all of the stories that have revolved around her through all the people she affected because you know she did raise over 87,000 orphan abandoned and abused children that's just one thing she did um i knew that her story was inspirational she was a complex also character a rich character and what do i mean by that well, um, in over, you know, she did 70 years of mission work and um, she was effective in every decade of her life. Um, and why, why do I say this? Well, um, she lived in a time where uh, it was a, in Honduras politically, it was a military junta. Then it was the transition to democracy. Then you're in a democracy, a fledgling democracy. And now you're in a state of what we have now which is a democracy that is under a lot of stress because of the economic, social, environmental issues um, that uh, Honduras is currently facing, as, as well as you know the public health crisis that we had in, in the pandemic years. She's such a remarkable woman. And uh, you're, I, I love the... It, as you're as you're saying there, I mean, the Republic of Honduras is under turmoil and the legacy that she has left is just incredible. Um, now, Nicole, for you, I mean, I was reading the reading the press notes for the film, and it sounds like your involvement in the, in, in the film was much more was very personal uh, and changing mm -hmm. in some ways. Can you talk a little about that? Yes. Absolutely. Um, so I'm Nicole Bernardi Reyes. I'm uh, the co-director of the film with Laura Bermudez, who is a Honduran filmmaker. And, uh, you know, together we we really knew this needed to be a Honduran story told by a Honduran because, first of all, she's, you know, she's a national treasure. And um, there are a lot of people out there who know her and a lot of people who don't. And so we wanted to make sure that we could tell not only her story, but her the story of her impact very personally on, on Honduras. And for me, I... Um, you know, I, I've made films, documentary films are not the easiest path. I don't, it's, you know, it's a calling, I think, rather than a, than a career. And I was kind of at a point for myself where I was just like, why am I doing this? A number of projects that we had worked really hard on um, before I met Jessica just kind of fizzled out, uh, as, as unfortunately some do. And I was, you know, reaching a certain age and I just kind of was like, why am I here? And I just, I was telling someone earlier, I literally shook my fist at the sky and was like, if I'm supposed to do this, I need a sign. And Jessica called me and um, literally, like literally the phone rang and I was like, well, that's very obvious. Okay, there's my sign. And, um, you know, I, uh, I I grew up in the Catholic faith. Uh, nuns were really important to me in that. I went to a Catholic high school, but like a lot of people do, I, you know, I kind of had drift, I've drifted from the institution, not the message. And um having the opportunity to see a woman religious just follow, you know, her mission from God without, with, you know, always within the, con you know, the context and constraints of, of institutional religion and her, the culture of her country and all this, but just really doing what she knows she was put on the planet to do was, um, I think for me was, it really kind of reconnected me to why I do the work that I do. And I think it was really inspiring to be able to help share this amazing story about 
a woman and the power of women's work that's led by faith that it you know it it was very much the journey that I needed it was a little it was the Jessica wake-up call <laughs> that I was asking for <laughs> Yeah, yeah I, I also want to make the statement, Steve, that I knew that this story needed to be told by women filmmakers, because we had a, such a strong um, spiritual woman leader and complex character. Um, and so that was intentional to have, you know, a filmmaker, uh, I call them the bosses, um, from the co-directors to the uh, senior um, music director to um, editors and so on, and uh, our cinematographer, Lisa Rensler. So because I knew that with the women's sort of eye, they could focus and really tell the story in a way that you said, okay, yes, I get it. You know, I can see that this is told in that sort of women um, perspective, that women eye. Um, and I think it also shows in the fact that we got some powerful, um, I call them testimonials from the two young women, Maria and Rosa, and we made them feel more comfortable and they were able to share their story, um, their powerful stories, because I, I feel like they were supported. They felt supported by women hearing their story. I'm so glad you said that because I think that that absolutely was so key uh, to this film's success, because I mean, uh, documentaries, you know, that hundred millions of thousands of documentaries. There's lots of documentaries. As I'm there are, um, but certainly with this one, when you're getting these young young women to tell their stories, there can be a difference between exploitative and empowering. And you definitely get the sense that this is not exploitative. That these women, there's a great level of trust between filmmakers and, and uh, I use the term subject, but I, I don't mean to be that cold. I mean, the, these young women is what I mean. Um, ab absolutely. Um, I'd like to talk a little bit about Sister Maria Rosa as well. I mean, I know uh, she's since passed, but what is it about her that was most striking to both of you? Because she's such a unique and wonderfully powerful woman. I'm going to, I'm going to start with, uh, with this one. This is Jessica. Um, well, she had so much impact, not only in Honduras, but internationally. And let me say why. So she was the first one that brought, um, SOS kinder off villages to, um, Latin America and they adopted her model. They yeah. partnered with her. She was a, she knew the co-founder Herman Minor of that institution. Um, she went into Austria and then she, you know, they partnered and they created over 500 homes for children. I mean, who does that? Um, she has a honorary degree from Marquette University because her um, site in Honduras was the first site of global brigades, which is now a um you know very successful uh, nonprofit organization that does mission uh works um in uh various countries and um she received an honorary degree from Marquette University she also received an honorary degree from a university in Canada and um that university is the University of St. Francis Xavier and um so that, and then she also has a nonprofit in Canada that raises funds for her um, programs down in Honduras that are still in existence today. So, um, and I know that she had great supporters in, in Europe um, because I've seen some of the things that were donated. The, there was an agricultural project and they donated greenhouses um uh, for her she had lots and lots of land lots of uh produce agricultural produce that she produced and so on and so forth in latin america and and, and so on so um you know she had supporters all over the place and this is what what i call the great multiplier effect the impact that she had all over 
I'm, I'm just curious. You mentioned like I, I'm in Canada. I don't know if you knew that. Mm-hmm. Um, do you know like it, you, is the nonprofit through Fr- Saint Francis Xavier, or is there is it uh, is it elsewhere? Like you mentioned, that she has an honorary degree from there. I'm just curious if you know any more about it. Nicole, do you want to? Um, yes. So actually, it's called Friends of Hunter and Children. Okay. In Canada, and it's out of Peter Petersburg, and so oh. this. It was the first international nonprofit that was created, I believe, right? Jessica is the first mm-hmm. one that was created yeah. to help uh, support sister. Um, the founders started going down there in the 80s. Um, and much like many of us met her and she looked right in, right into their heart and was, was, she just had a way of knowing of like seeing who you were and kind of like what you needed to do in mm-hmm. life. And, but not in a judgmental way, but just kind of like, oh, you are good at this and that's what you should do and also you can do that by helping me do this like she was also a really you know she was this one-two punch of having this like really amazing connection with people and understanding people and and awakening things in them and then also getting them to join her in her mission and join her in you know her merry mission of of saving the children of Honduras and giving their families dignity and, and helping them transform their lives and hopefully the country. Yeah, I, I experienced that, what you just said, Nicole, because one day I, I went down there and I know she did this for everyone. She would say, I, I've been praying. I've been praying for someone to arrive and here you are. Yeah. And, you know, those are powerful words to hear for anyone to hear. Once you hear those words, you're like, okay, yeah, whatever you want me to do. Yeah. It's true. It, it's hard to walk away when somebody has said that to you. It's, well, I really have a four thirty meeting. I got to get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Somebody puts that. That's 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 incredible. Um, one of the things that comes up in the film, and I, I thought it was it was interesting, is just briefly, but talks about uh, Honduras and and the North American lens. And pe- I, I just wondered if there's something. What do you think? that that most people from outside the country misunderstand about Honduras? Wow, that's a really good one. I think that um, I was born in Honduras, so let me be clear about that. And I immigrated to the States when I was two years old. But my family has always been um, super connected to, um, you know, Honduras family members, friends down in Honduras. And we go down there frequently. Um, it, it is with great sadness that I think that what we perceive is that there's a lot of news and it's always perceived as negative news, mm. you know, and it's like, can we get some news out there that is a little bit positive about people that are, you know, really uh, living lives, digni- dig- you know, dignified lives that there's, yeah, there's struggles, um, but also there's, you know, we're, we're trying to progress. We're trying to get educated um, and uh, we're trying to create businesses and so on. Um, yes, there are problems, and uh, but there are people, out, people there in Honduras that are doing good things for Honduras. And if we, you know, can continue to receive good edu- educational um, uh, opportunities and access to um, you know economic uh, opportunities, then we can do even more. So I think, I think that this film does a little bit of that and shows that by some of the um, you know entrepreneurial businesses that uh, we highlight um, or some of that work that we highlight through the commercial kitchen project, through the agricultural project um, in the film. And I think also. You know, we were we really wanted to make this be a film from a Honduran perspective, but we wanted to kind of help clear up, not clear, but answer some of the questions why, right? And from a North American perspective, we always are just seeing Exodus stories, but we don't know why. And we're like, why? It, you know, we don't understand. You know, it's like, why are these people letting their children cross, do these dangerous crossings without them? And so we wanted to kind of show that and give a little bit of context too, which is a big thing. So you know, that documentary that we found was, I think, really great and helpful for that because it kind of gave some of that context from the 80s as to the forces outside of Honduras that were really kind of helped push it, you know, pushing some of these things and how Sister was trying to um, 
really support the people there. And we did a screening with some very conservative people from kind of middle America. And afterwards we kind of asked them about it. And there was a farmer from uh, Kentucky. And the one thing he picked out is he was just like, you know, the people were coming here because they, you know, they couldn't make money as farmers, they had to feed their families. And so he really was able to draw this line between like her agricultural co-ops and trying to support farmers and and why people would make the decision to come here. And for me, that was really, you know, I, I was hoping that because I think so much of the chatter and noise we have here is because we're not listening to each other and we're not taking time to understand like the bigger picture. And so it was really great to see that people from very different world viewpoints, when they see this film, they can start to understand the bigger picture. Absolutely, um, for sure. Uh, one of the things, I mean, certainly when you're, when you're following the, the journey of these young women and, and Sister Maria Rosa, um, we see so much embedded within of toxic masculinity. I mean, this is a phrase that has come to the forefront in the last few years. But one of the incredible things about about the school and about the whole facilities and all these things is is it's embedded with a sense of hope. Um, I'm just wondering, from your perspective, what does it mean to empower women in this in this particular culture? Wow, that's really complex. Um, let me begin by talking about the school. It was founded by Sister Maria to address um, at, you know, at the time, and now it's expanded a little bit, two problems, because she was always trying to address problems. Um, uh, one of them is a fight of young, um, really children, um, that go to the city from rural areas and they're seeking work mm -hmm. and they end up being domestic workers. So she wanted to make sure that um, there was somewhere for them to go to receive education and training around their domestic worker rights, labor rights, um, uh, understanding about, you know, they're young, they're, sometimes they're 12, 10, 14 year olds. They don't even know how their bodies work. Um, so, you know, there's, or, or receive the kind of education that they need in order to really make a decent lives, dignified life for themselves in the labor force. So that was one of the, the problems she wanted to, to solve. The second one was um, really street kids, women who were um, street kids that maybe they were trying to sell little trinkets or other kind of goods in order to make extra money for their families because of you know poverty. Um, and so uh, she wanted to also provide that space. And for those um, kids coming from um, that might be living with their families, um, what, so you see that kind of just juxtaposition of, uh, you know, the Maria story and the Rosa story in, in Sisters program and then really living outside with the family. Um, and um, we wanted to show, you know, so she tried to do that to address that. And in the process of this, creating this school and the school being in place, then she was also an actor to, um, you know, really respond and be an advocate for um, the rights of, of young women, the rights of children. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, she addressed Congress in Honduras on, on these matters. And a lot of people really, you know, she really spoke to their hearts and there was some advance in, in these areas. Uh, it, it, she's, She's such an incredible woman. I, I love the part where she's talking about how it how it began. And she says, we started with 10 homes and I thought that was way too much. And after all, you know, that, how are we going to fill that? And it was like within a, a couple of days or something. It was just, it filled up overnight, it seemed. Um, and yet it mm -hmm. expanded in this incredible way. It's just, just an amazing, uh, amazing woman. Yeah. And that's what I say. It's like the multiplier effect, you know, that you start something. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a faithful person. I said, God always answers your prayers. God answers sister's prayers, but with a twist, you know? And, um, you know, you see something good coming up and growing, but you gotta do more. And so, um, yes, 
she thought that one home would be enough to solve, you know, the what she saw in front of her as a problem. And then she realized, oh my God, within like a day, it was filled and I needed more homes. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that I think it's Sister Maria Rosa says in the film, I would just love to get both of your thoughts on this. God, God did not come for the saints. I was just wondering what yes. that means to you. Um, I'll start because this is one of the reasons why I love her is I think that like I just love her as a person is she was one of the most human people that I've ever met like she just was so full in her humanity and what I mean by that is that she knows she screws you know she she'd get herself in trouble she um she could she knew other people were going to get themselves in trouble and she was just doing the work she was doing as a human and loving as a human and I think that's just that's just it like saints when they're here are people and god is here to guide people through this life as people as best as as we can can do so and so for me that was really um what she meant by that in this and you know that um every everyone can be a sinner you know everyone is a sinner and so just god is here for us like god doesn't expect us to be perfect He's, that God's here to help us. All right. For me, it, 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 it means we all have the capacity for good or bad. We're not all good and we're not all bad. So that's exactly what she said. And so um, I think also when you're really living the meaning and purpose of your life, you're going to be attracted to the good. Mm. And that good really not only fills you up, but also fills others. And the, and what in whatever uh, talents, you know, energy, talents, resources, whatever, whatever you have been given in life, you can have such a profound effect on on the lives of others. And um, you just have to take action. And sister was always like, I got to go. I got to move. Five. I'm always thinking five steps ahead. You know, I'm going to act. And she was, she was like that. She always said, no, we got to, we got to keep moving. You know, it's, we got to think five steps ahead. And that was such a compelling sort of uh, call to action for many, many people. Mm, absolutely. Uh, I Just uh, as we start to wrap up here. Uh, I would love to know what you hope that people, audiences take away from with this life. Um, I'll start. Yeah, uh, I hope that audiences take away um, a message of hope and love and inspiration uh, to do work, whatever that means to them, to do the good work to help their fellow man or woman, child, um, and to remember her story and if they feel so moved to help continue her, her legacy. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, it's that, uh, wow, we had we have such incredible, rich um, stories about, you know, women who, especially spiritual, you know, women, sisters, like Sister Maria Rosa, who have had such a profound impact in, in, in a lot of people's lives. And um, really, it's the message that God calls you every day. And, um, you know, it's really up to us to know uh, whether we're, we're, we have the capability to respond. And actually you do, but sometimes we don't do, you know, and perhaps because of fear, perhaps because we, you know, we tick up, we tick off a list in our head of the, why I can't do this today or whatever, but, you know, God doesn't call you to do things and in a perfect way. So it's okay to just get started. I really appreciate that. And honestly, I appreciate the time for you both. Um, she's a remarkable woman, but more importantly, I think the legacy she leaves, the what she's left behind this is, is infinitely more remarkable and how it's really affecting a culture and a whole generation, multiple generations, I should say, of women uh, and men. But I just thank you so much uh, for your time and I wish you the best.